the changing nature of warfare. The cause begins in 1792, just after the start of the French Revolution that sees the abdication of King Louis XVI with his later execution in 1793. The monarchy is overthrown and a radical democracy set in place which lasts until 1799. As part of the radical takeover, the Republic of France rather boldly challenged all the monarchist countries. However, France did not have an army fit to fight the scale of battle it was proposing. Therefore, Les Aires Carnot, in 1793, declares Levé en masse, literally commanding the country to all rise as one and put all their efforts behind raising and maintaining an army. The Committee of Public Safety was set up to arm and clothe all the new recruits. Between 1793 and 94, Carnot integrates the new volunteer army with the established army, creating the revolutionary army. The nature of warfare had been changed. No longer did the French army fight for the king, now they fought for their nationalistic pride and country, and on a scale not seen for hundreds of years. The French army also had a great advantage in weaponry. Jean-Baptiste de Gribeval had standardised the calibre of the French artillery, allowing for a greater rate of fire and greater accuracy. These were the best artillery units in Europe. Change did not stop with size. The block structure of the French regiment was changed to a division, allowing for near standalone armies 12,000 strong with their own infantry, artillery and cavalry units. This increased mobility, allowing for the armies to surround their enemies, and reduced strain on supply trains. Tactics were also altered. Instead of the simple point-and-shoot method, the French army developed skirmisher units. These were groups of light infantry who went ahead of the main body to fire on a specific area. It suited the new passion of nationalism, as once the unit was on the move, they were outside the morale-boosting area of their commander. Columns were also a large feature of the French army. These were a few men wide and tens of men deep, who acted as a battering ram to the enemy line defence. It was beneficial in two ways. It negated the timely line defence training and the column could break into skirmish units. However, due to the high exposure of the sides, the casualty rate was large. One major feature of the French army that helped them to win wars through these seven to eight years was their method of promotion. No longer would wealth or status get you a cushy commander or general job. Posts were appointed on ability. This resulted in a highly trained and confident army leadership hierarchy. These changes allowed for the French army to win 27 out of 38 battles during the period. Their largest defeat was to the Second Coalition in 1798-99, where France lost most of Italy. The French army was a well-trained and numerically superior army that seemed nearly undefeatable during the period, and this opinion continued into the Napoleonic era. However, there was one major drawback to the increase in size of the army. From 1792 to 95, France and her allies could financially and literally feed the vast army. However, after 95, the army would have to live off the land, pillaging defeated towns, often raping the women and burning the houses. Thank you for listening. Remember to thumbs up, comment and subscribe. Next in the series is the Napoleonic Era.